What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV. In this video, we're going to talk about the Google Pixel Fold. Reviews are starting to come out and there's even a big article from Aros Technica where they go in and talk about how their Pixel Fold actually broke. And I kind of want to put some emphasis on what to expect with the Pixel Fold and why I think some of these reviews will end up being not wrong, but a little bit premature. And also why that Ars Technica article is kind of incorrect as well. So without further ado, let's kind of jump into this. So folding phones, as you probably know, if you follow my channel, I've been covering them for years now, especially the Galaxy Z Fold. I carried the Z Fold 1, I cover, covered it, and then I really ended up getting the 2, 3, and 4. And I will also get the 5, and I've had some other folding phones as well from some Chinese manufacturers. And I love them. They're my favorite form factor. They are my daily phone to use. But I have gone into this, you know, through the years knowing that Folding phones have more moving parts, meaning there's more things that could easily break versus a traditional slab phone. And when you factor in those costs in terms of things potentially breaking a little bit more easily, you have to get insurance as a way to back up what you are putting in as a huge investment. Folding phones generally have been over, all of them basically over 1500 bucks, close to $2,000 at times, if not more than that. And you want to, you want to hedge your bet. You don't want this thing to break and have to pay, you know, hundreds or even a thousand bucks to get it fixed. Now, I have to admit, a lot of the times that I've broken my folding phones hasn't been my fault. It's been covered under warranty, so I wouldn't even need insurance in that regard. But I still feel a lot safer with these real expensive phones and the multiple moving parts that I want to get. And you should, I, I advise you to, to get the insurance either through whoever you're buying the phone through or your carrier or some other place to get the insurance. Now to add on to that, Pixel Fold has just come out. It's a first generation product from Google Pixel. It's also got a screen on there reportedly that is a generation ahead of almost all the other folding phones on the market, including the Fold 5. It's a Samsung display and it's Samsung's best newest folding technology. Now, when any company makes a first generation product, there's always kind of some issues, either mechanical or software or both. And I really don't expect the Google Pixel Fold to probably not be any different than some of those rules or the things that have happened in the past. I definitely feel like what you're getting with the Pixel Fold, have it be good or bad battery life, but I'm really talking about the bad battery life. Um, any, if there's any lagginess, if there's any weird quirks, if there's things that need to be ironed out, those will be. Google is known to push out years of updates and timely updates on their Google Pixel phones. So if there's weird things going on, if there's really, really bad battery life, I expect the Google Pixel team to push out updates that will amend a lot of those issues. You look back to something as early as like say the Google Pixel 6 where that one had a lot of software issues. It was really, really buggy for a lot of folks. And they ended up pushing out a ton of updates and fixed and righted a lot of those wrongs. So I highly expect anything that you see with weirdness or things not working, a lot of that stuff will be fixed. Does it mean they're gonna fix it for third party apps as well, not looking correct on the phone or looking kind of awkward? No, they unfortunately probably don't have a solution for that unless these third party app manufacturers start updating their apps to fit and, and look right on folding phones. As for hardware issues, to go into this Ars Technica article, which if you wanna read, I'll link it down below. The headline of it says, the closed display halves almost touch and, they can, and that can smash debris into the screen. And then the bottom says, my dead pixel fold display, that huge white gradient should not be there. You can see it at the bottom half of the screen, this huge white gradient that he says has basically killed his phone and he wasn't able to use it any longer. And when I see something like that, I know that's probably not gonna be the rule. It's gonna be the, it, it'll happen occasionally. I, I, I guarantee that other people are gonna get their Google, their Google Pixel Fold phones, and they're also gonna have weird things go on with their display. It happens with the Samsung Galaxy Folds quite often. No, not, I wouldn't say, probably not 10% of the time, but enough to where you're gonna see it on social media, or you're gonna see it on Reddit, or you're gonna see it in an article, and it's gonna make somewhat news my i'm here to say just relax folding phones have a lot of pieces that could potentially break 
They have uh, they're, they're newer technology, but they're so fun. And to have that risk of having fun and using a device with a huge display and using it in different ways versus what you have with a slab phone for the last decade and almost two decades of, of usage, this is super fun. This is really interesting stuff. That's why I love the folding phones. So I wouldn't freak out if you see weird technical issues, especially on the software side, they will be ironed out without a doubt. And then with the hardware size, like I said, this will be something that happens every so often. It's gonna be on social media. People are gonna make a buzz about it. I might even make a buzz about it because it might break in a weird way or it might be a learning lesson for us all or it might be a reason for me to say, hey, make sure you get the insurance. I like that. If someone was telling me advice to when to, to get a folding phone, like I tell you guys all the time, get a folding phone. I love them. I think they're freaking awesome. Pixel Fold, I'm super stoked about it because of the bigger outside, wider display, because of the wider inside display, because of the Pixel software, because of the Pixel cameras. I'm excited about all that. That's the main reasons why. So get the, get the insurance and you'll have no worries for the most part. Even if Pixel support sucks, you're gonna read that a lot too. So does Samsung's, I've dealt with them. Um, I'd probably say the best support I've ever dealt with, probably Apple, and I know they're not perfect either. Everyone has their cases where support sucks. But you know what? If you buy an insurance plan through your carrier, you don't have to deal with Google, or if you buy it through Best Buy, you don't, which they don't even sell the phone, but if they did, you don't have to deal with them. So there's multiple ways to get around having to exclusively deal with Google um, insurance. but. You should be fine regardless. You have that, you know, 15, I think it's $15 a month insurance to cover that phone if you're so worried about breaking it. But don't be, I'm super stoked about it. Hopefully you guys are too. Don't get frightened away from buying this phone. At least give it a try. See if you love it. I think you really, really will. These phones, these folding phones are a blast. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you guys in the next one.